For the best audio experience and to avoid embarrassment, we strongly suggest you use headphones whilst listening to Bubble and Squeak. Hi, I'm Peter Santoscano, and this is Bubble and Squeak, a podcast with uncanny sounds, funny interludes, and stories, most weird, many true. Okay, here's season two, episode 10. Our show today comes in three parts. Part one, a searing satirical poem by Craig Santos Perez. Part two, mentoring session number four, an original radio play written by me for Climate Change Theater Action. And part three, the premiere of a new song by Tadenda. Thanksgiving in the Plantation OC. Thank you, instant mashed potatoes. Your bland taste makes me feel like an average American. Thank you, incarcerated Americans, for filling the labor shortage and packing potatoes in Idaho. Thank you, canned cranberry sauce, for your gelatinous curves. Thank you, native tribe in Wisconsin, Your lake is now polluted with phosphate discharge from nearby cranberry bogs. Thank you, crisp green beans. You are my excuse for eating dessert a la mode later. Thank you, indigenous migrant workers, for picking the beans in Mexico's farm belt. May your bodies survive the season. Thank you, NAFTA, for making life so cheap. Thank you, butterball turkey. For the word butterball, which I repeat all day, say it with me, butterball, 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 because it helps me swallow the bones of genocide. Thank you, dark meat, for being so juicy. No offense, dry and fragile white meat, you matter too. Thank you, 90 million factory farm turkeys, for giving your lives during the holidays. Thank you, factory farm workers, for clipping turkey toes and beaks so they don't scratch and peck each other in overcrowded dark sheds. Thank you, Stunning Tank, for immobilizing most of the turkeys hanging upside down by crippled legs. Thank you, stainless steel knives. Thank you, Scalding Hot Defeathering Tank, for finally killing the last still conscious turkeys. Thank you, Turkey Tales, for feeding Pacific Islanders all year round. Thank you, Empire of Slaughter, for your fatty leftovers. Thank you, Tryptophan, for the promise of an afternoon nap. Thank you, dear readers, for joining me at the table of this poem. Please join hands, bow your heads, and repeat after me. Let us bless the hands that harvest and butcher our food. Bless the hands that drive delivery trucks and stock grocery shelves. Bless the hands that cooked and paid for this meal. Bless the hands that bind our hands and force feed our endless mouth. May we forgive each other and be forgiven.
Are you sure you want to invite him? He's my age, and... <laughs> and you like him. <laughs> I don't even know if he's queer. I heard he's a faggot. A what? An incandescent guy. Incandescent? Light bulb. It's old technology. Didn't they teach you that in ICS classes? <laughs> ICS? When were you born? Ah, uh, ah, uh, 2062. Ah, I was born in 2091. It's not integrated climate studies anymore. It's climate arts. Back in the 70s, we mostly learned climate history phases, inaction, action, and the great transition. That, and a lot of pre-transition technology. We mostly did justice studies in Clylet. They never taught us about that light bulb. Incandescent. Ancestors used those during pre-pre-transition times. Gassy as hell. Needed watts of energy and got so hot you couldn't touch them. Faggots like him use those bulbs if they can find them. He's a fag. Part of the faggot movement. I seriously never heard of that before. Why are they called faggots? Didn't you take queer classes? <laughs> they call it lig bitty gens now. Oh, okay. That makes sense. <laughs> well, faggot, oh man, it has a long history. In Britain, in the 1300s, a faggot was a pile of sticks, tied up, sometimes used to burn witches. And then it evolved into a cursler against older women. In the 1900s, it had two meanings. In England, they sometimes called a cigarette a fag. Maybe because of the original meaning. Faggot is a pile of sticks, but a single stick is a fag. Why would they teach us that in Lig Bitty Jen's class? <laughs> you grew up in such a good time. When did you come out to yourself? Nine when I came out trans no bind. We had my coming out reception four years ago. I was 16. It was the last big altogether before the 2107 pandemic. Shit's brutal. Well, you know. It's good the center connected us. I get lots from the mentoring. Yeah, well, half the time I feel like you're mentoring me. <laughs> Gotta keep you up to date. So, he's a faggot because he smokes leaf weed. No, the word kept changing. Fag stopped referring to smoking at some point. Phobes used faggot as a cursler against same gending queers like me. They said it to trans no binds like you. When a phobe beat up someone like us, they shouted faggot. Shit's brutal. Ancestors were so misdirected. Slavery, petroleum, slaughterhouses. What do you think future gens will say about us? We don't pollute like a hundred years ago, but we travel too much. I prefer walking around town and checking out new spaces and ruins. If I was always far-flung, I never would have met him in the art center last week. Yeah, your generation is much more settled. Shit, my gen is always on edge. Like, we never survived the great suffering. Everyone was displaced more than once. If it wasn't a flood, it was fire or heat... Things have finally started to quiet down. How did you even go to school? <laughs> school went with me into every shelter, tent city, and mountain town. Whenever people got to a safe place, they had to do something with us kids, so classrooms popped up. And that is why you know so much about faggots. Right, faggots. It changed, again, around 2040. By then, of course, same-gending queers and gender no-binds had full constitutional rights most anywhere. Being queer became celebrated like a birth or a marriage. So phobes found other targets. Faggot was no longer a cursler. It, it became a meaningless insult like Zoomer or Gassy. I never understood Zoomer. <laughs> well, first, faggots. 20 years ago, a fringe movement started, mostly up north. It came out of the homesteading craze. Eco-communes fell apart by the 2080s. Some people returned to the cities, and they just never fit in. They pushed back. Now you have a few who stalker after old technology. If they could, they'd burn fossil fuels. They use pre-transition tech, and they cook with wood. A philosopher gave them the name faggot, and it stuck. Maybe because of the pile of sticks thing. 
Yeah, full circle. You're always going to have people like this, immune to group norms. I find some of them can be fresh, independent thinkers. So you think we should invite him? To Queerdo? Sure. He might enjoy himself. Even if he's not queer? Yeah, and even if he is a faggot. Bubble and Squeak theme song is Worthless by the Jelly Rocks from the album Bang and Whimper. You also heard Undercover from the brand new album Kuwaka Mushina by Tatenda. Tatenda is spelled T-A-X-D-A. Look for it on Spotify or wherever you stream music. Poet Craig Santos Perez read Thanksgiving in the Plantation scene. It appears in his book of poetry, Habitat Thresholds. Mentoring session number four is my original play commissioned by Climate Change Theater Action 2021. I played the character Elder, and Max Curry played Younger. Max currently lives in New York City. Feel free to say hi to me on Twitter at P2Sun. Oh, and thanks for listening. For more shows like this one, visit rockcandyrecordings.com. Hey Sugar, I'm Erica Michelle. I host a voice diary called Brown Sugar Diaries on the Rock Candy Network, where I spill all the tea about my daily experiences, life lessons, my journey to healing and wholeness, my life as an entrepreneur, student doctor, CEO of a nonprofit, and I give my opinion on the current happenings of the world. You see why I have this voice diary? I got a lot of stuff to talk about. Tune into Brown Sugar Diaries wherever you listen to podcasts and let's sip on this tea. Or wine. You'll cup your business, sugar, okay?